Okay, so at this point, we've pretty much done all the heavy lifting for our project. We've created all the logic for the different questions, the buttons, and really going forward, all we're gonna do is duplicate and uh, some make some minor edits to each of the uh, the newly created objects because we've already done, really in its essence, set everything up. So at this point, we have a fully working, uh, fully working game quiz. We just need to add some more questions. So a couple things to do. Going to, uh, real quick, just turn off my player buttons here. You see how the player triggers are showing? Uh, probably should have done that earlier. I mean, it's okay to have additional slides here, but since I'm not using them, um, I just want to free up a little bit more of my space here with the triggers. So I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, first thing I'm going to duplicate is this uh, bottom graphic and the cover screen. So if I bring open the timeline, you can see those. I'm going to turn the transparency back on. So I'm going to bring it all the way down. It's going to make it a little bit easier to track and work with these. And of course, once we verify everything else is working, when I add the additional two buttons, uh, we'll turn them all off. So I'm going to just control click to make a copy. So I made a copy both of the cover as well as the marker. And now would be a good time to rename those. So I'll call that one cover two, and then I'll call this one marker two. Now I can't change the trigger over here. You see, see how button marker two is still pointing to Q1, question one? Well, once I create that new layer, then I'll be able to come back here and then make that change. So I'm gonna leave these up here for now, and then let's jump over to the slide layers to make those changes. So I'm just gonna duplicate each one of these. So I have to duplicate them one at a time. So I'll just select the Q1 and choose duplicate, and then we'll just call this one Q2 and Q1 correct, duplicate it. And then just one more, so question one incorrect. So because we set up the feedback layers with, with only that one trigger that just hides the layer, we don't have to do anything to either of those. But Q2 layer, the question two layer, this is where we need to make several updates. So if I go through the trigger list, right, I'll just start at the top, don't have to do anything with the button submit because that's just gonna change a, uh, it's gonna change to normal state when any one of these choices is selected. That's totally fine, doesn't affect us. But show layer Q1, well I'm on Q2, right? So I need to be able to jump to, not Q1 correct, but jump to Q2 correct, right? So these little hyperlinks make this really easy. Same thing for the Q1 incorrect, that now goes to Q2 incorrect. Now I don't want to change button marker one, right? I need to change both of these to uh, button marker two. So double click this one and change two. And double click this one, two. And I also want to change the cover one to cover two. All right, so we pretty much update, I guess, all of them. One, two, three, four, five out of the six, right? So the rest of these are all updated. Now, at this point, everything is set up for our question layers. We jump back to the base layer, and we just need to make sure that this um, button marker now points to the Q2 layer. All right, and that is it. We can continue duplicating these questions as many as we like but in essentially that's all there is to uh, building this out. In the next movie, we'll quickly put an intro duction slide and a conclusion slide that displays when the last question is answered. So in this example, we're just doing two, but you could do, you know, continue duplicating these, make three, five, 10, 20 questions, and you still have all of this consolidated to a single slide interaction.